Next we want to discuss uh, night illusions. So night illusions can occur and lead to spatial disorientation or lead to landing errors. First we want to discuss the leans. The leans are referred as a term that we refer to when a pilot has been in a prolonged turn, perhaps like a standard rate turn to the right, for example. And if you stay in that turn for a period of time, your ears start to recognize that as straight and level. So then when you roll back upright, you feel like you're actually turning in the opposite direction. So pilots are apt to go back into that turn. But the leans basically describes when you're in a bank and you think you're upright, or when you're upright and you think you're in a bank. Okay? The next thing we want to discuss is Coriolis. Um, the Coriolis illusion is very similar to the leans because you're going to be in a prolonged turn, perhaps a standard rate turn, um, but you move your head suddenly. If you shift your head very quickly, it may make you feel like you're actually rotating on a different axis. So if I'm in a turn to the right, for example, and I shift my head very quickly, it may make me feel as if the plane is pitching up or down, and then the pilot will react by putting the plane in a dangerous situation. Okay, next we'll discuss the graveyard spin and the graveyard spiral. They're going to be very similar in the fact that for the graveyard spin, if you inadvertently got yourself into a spin at night or in the, in the clouds, if you're flying an uh, IMC, um, if a pilot is in a spin for a prolonged period of time and then they come out of the spin, because they were in the spin for so long, then the body starts or your ears start adjusting to that's more of the norm. So when you come out of the spin, you'll actually feel like you're spinning in the opposite direction and therefore causes the pilot to put the plane back into a spin. The graveyard spiral, very similar um, in the fact that you start to enter a uh, turn and then um, the airplane feels in your mind as if you're in a descent because your brain has now become accustomed to being in that turn. And when the plane feels as if it's in a descent, the pilot may pull back to correct the um, supposed descent, which is going to tighten the turn and create a graveyard spiral. The next illusion is uh, somatic gravic. And this illusion is when you suddenly add power or reduce power, it makes you feel as if you're pitching up or pitching down. So if you're flying along at a certain speed and you suddenly add full power, it may have the feeling that you're pitching up and changing your altitude so the pilot will respond by pushing the nose down or perhaps down too far. And then the reverse is true. If you suddenly reduce your power, it'll make you feel as if you're descending suddenly and the pilot may have the tendency to pull back. Next on our list is the inversion illusion. And what happens here or could possibly happen is as a pilot is climbing, if they tend to pitch over to level, too quickly, it may feel like they're actually pitching over backwards and it'll cause the pilot to push the nose down um, but push it down too severely. And next is the elevator illusion. So if you imagine being in an elevator, that feeling that when the elevator lifts you up is the same type of feeling you might uh, have in an airplane if you get a sudden updraft for some reason. Um, and so what happens is the pilot feels the sudden lift up and would inadvertently push the nose of the aircraft down and typically, you know, too far down. Next will be uh, the false horizon. Um, this one I've actually experienced. Um, it's not that uncommon. If you fly on a very dimly lit night and the lights on the ground happen to line up as if that's your horizon because you can't see the real horizon, then in your mind you start thinking that might be the horizon. So you have to really pay attention to your instruments inside the cockpit and sometimes at night when it's very, very dark and you fly over a dimly lit area, it's as if you're flying in IMC, in Instrument Meteorological Conditions, and you have to really, really trust your instruments. And then lastly, um, the autokinesis, uh, never experienced this personally, but supposedly if you uh, stare at a bright light for a period of time at night, the, the object will appear to start moving around and a disoriented pilot may start to move the aircraft in order to follow along with the light to keep the plane still. Uh, when in actuality the plane wasn't moving, it was just the illusion of the light. Let's discuss illusions that can possibly lead to landing errors. So first of all, we'll start with runway width. 
If you're used to a runway that's um, more narrow, maybe it's a small country airport that you're used to flying in and out of, and then you go fly to an airport that's a much larger, the width of the runway will kind of throw your perception off. It'll make you feel like you're in much closer than you really are. So what can happen is it'll cause you to round out or flare too soon. Um, you have to just really be aware of this and still use your same technique as far as coming in for landing when you look at your landing spot and then as you get in closer closer you transition your view to all the way down the runway looking at where your tree line would be. Um, or if you're used to landing on a larger wider runway and now you're going to a smaller more narrow runway you're going to feel like you're farther away so what may happen is um, you end up closer than you meant to be or your approach path was lower than you meant. Next, let's discuss uh, sloping terrain. So let's say you're coming in for landing and the runway is slightly downhill. That will give you the perception that you end up coming, that you're higher than you really are. So your approach path might tend to be lower than it should be. On the other hand, if you have a runway that's sloped uphill and you're coming into land, then it's going to make you feel that you're lower than you really are, and so you'll have the tendency to fly too high. Again, you should just trust your Vassy and Pappy system and try not to get caught, into that, uh, caught in that trap or caught in that illusion. With the atmospheric illusion, this has to do with um, the clarity of the air. So if it's hazy or uh, maybe a little bit of mist, and the runway isn't as clear, you'll feel like you're farther away than you really are. Whereas if it's a, say for example, a very clear cold winter night when the air is very crisp and clear, then you'll feel like you're, you are closer than you really are. Okay, and then last we have some ground lighting air, uh, illusions. And what happens here is if you have a very dimly lit runway, then you feel like you're farther away than you really are or if the lights of the runway are up on bright, you may feel like you're closer than you really are. So again, just really trust your Vassy Pappy system and be aware of these illusions to not get caught in these traps. So again, these are just some night illusions that you need to be aware of. Uh, some may lead to spatial disorientation and some may lead to landing errors.